to the CBICU Schoolhouse with Mama Leah, because even ICU nurses need a safe place to grow. Hi, my name is Leah. I've been a CBSU nurse for 18 years, and there's nothing that I love more than talking about all CBSU related things. This series is going to be about impellas. Um, and so today we're just going to talk about what an impella is, a little bit about the console screen so that you can feel confident in caring for a patient that um, has an impella. This is going to be geared toward bedside nursing in the ICU. Sometimes I'm going to leave out a few things that are more cath lab specific that you may not see, definitely not cardiology specific, but just nursing care in a CBICU type setting so that you can feel confident whenever you're caring for your patient. So what is an impella? An impella is a left-sided assist device. We've all heard that, right? It's an LVAT. But how is this different than other types of LVATs? First thing is that it's percutaneous. It's a lot less invasive than most of the other types of LVATs. And so that's why we prefer it. It can also stand for super, super short duration. A lot of the other LVATs are basically going to be there for a while. This one is like, I'm putting it in place and maybe you won't even need it. Maybe you're just trying to get through this cardiogenic shock thing and hopefully you don't even need any of this anymore and you're just going to heal right up. So we're putting it in. Uh, most of the Impella devices are approved for like 10 to 14 days or less. So a patient who's getting Impella, really we our hope is that they're not going to have it for a very long time. The least amount of time that they can get out of cardiogenic shock or whatever it is and get it out, the better they're going to be, the safer they're going to be, the happier we're going to be. So the job of an Impella is to decrease the, especially we're going to talk left. I'm just going to tell you now, there is an RP, which I've made other videos on, but when I'm talking today, just kind of think left because that's what you're going to see most commonly. And it's easier to kind of talk about that. So it's to unload that left ventricle so that basically we can get more blood flow out of the heart to the rest of the body. So that we can increase the map so that both the coronary arteries get more perfusion and all of the other organs are getting more perfusion while the body's in a shock state. And through all of this, it's going to decrease the workload of the heart by unloading that ventricle of all that extra blood flow. And it's also going to, by doing that, uh, decrease the myocardial uh, oxygen consumption and increase the amount of oxygen that actually gets out to our tissues. And so that is the job of an impella. That's what it's doing. So what do we need to know as the bedside nurse? One of the most important things that we're going to be doing in an ICU setting is monitoring this device. So as that patient is rolling in, I am looking at that patient. I'm looking at their vital signs. Like, are they hemodynamically stable? What drips are hanging up above the patient? I'm also going to be looking at the site itself. And so I'm looking, is there a hematoma? Is this secured appropriately? What does their leg below that site look like? Uh, there's a two valve that um, we'll talk a little bit about. Is it is it snapped to the, to, uh, to the right? Is it righty tighty tight? is the dressing where I can see the centimeters on the impella so that I can know that if this impella moves, I'm looking at the console. So I'm kind of taking all this in as my patient rolls in to make an informed decision. Before the impella uh, drop off is complete, I'm going to make sure that I assess the pulses. I always assess the pulses with an impella with a Doppler, and this is multifactorial. But the number one reason is if I have the Doppler ready in the room when the patient gets there and I start trying to Doppler those pulses and we all either hear them or don't hear them, then we all have an agreement about what's going on. If I just reach down there and touch them and say, I can't feel them. And then a cath lab nurse reaches down there and says, oh, I can feel them. Then it's like, what, what's going on really? So I always Doppler them. If they're like, oh, they're right here. And they like, you know, show me where they're at. I'm actually going to be like, great, perfect. Let me just check on my little Doppler and mark them. And that way we all hear more than one person hears in the room be really important as you care for a patient with an impella to assess those pulses very frequently. It's very common complication that we have limb ischemia below the site. And there is something we can do if we catch it early enough, and that is put in a reperfusion sheath. And so if we put this in, we might can get blood flow back, but we need to know that it's happening. We need to be assessing our pulses, assessing that neurovascular status of that leg, and then intervening in a timely fashion so we can save that patient's leg. So as I'm looking at the site, I'm making sure that it's secured appropriately. Uh, what is best practice is that you have uh, two tachyderms cut in a V-shape and your impella is coming up through it and you uh, V-shape them around it so that the site stays clean, but the impella itself can uh, be coming out. Uh, we want to leave the two valve outside of that dressing and we that way if we have to uh, reposition it, we can pretty easily. And then we want to make sure that uh, there's going to be an angle, like your body isn't flat, right? So unlike a lot of like, sometimes with central line dressings, like IJs, we like put them down really, really tight so they don't move. That's not what we're doing here with the impella. 
with the impella, I want to maintain what's called the angle of injury. And so if we don't, we can damage that artery and a lot of other things can happen, suction alarms, all the things. So a lot of times there's going to be a sterile four by four that is just folded up and placed right underneath to attain the right height of the angle of insertion. But if there's not, that's okay. As long as it looks at the same angle the whole time that you have the patient and we're never putting the tegaderm down tight over the top of the impella. We're just simply using those two together so that it can come out, but the site, site stays sterile. And you always want to have a dressing that's transparent. I want to see if there's a hematoma forming. I want to see if there's bleeding. I may have to change that dressing and that's fine. I don't want to uh, not see what's going on underneath there. That's a huge artery. A lot's gone on. These are sick patients. So you want to make sure you can see it. And I'm constantly assessing my pulse. Now, the goal of adding the impella is that hopefully we're not having to go super high on these vasopressors and not having to go super high on these inotropes because those all have side effects. But if I have a patient that's on an impella and I am having to turn these things up, even once I'm getting this assist, I'm definitely communicating that with my cardiologist because my expectation is I could pull back on some of those things uh, once this impella is put in place. So the impella is helping me keep my BAP above 65, but I also don't want a wildly high MAP on this patient. So impellas are both preload dependent and afterload sensitive. So they need a lot of preload. They need volume. Um, every facility is going to be different. And if you look on the internet, you're going to find all kinds of different stuff. But if our patients can tolerate it, depending on pulmonary status and how their kidneys work and all these different things, we will run the CVP like around 10 on these patients if they can tolerate it. Your physician will make that, provider will make that call, but that would not be an abnormal thing to see on a patient with an impella as a CVP more like 10 because the impella is sitting inside of that ventricle and uh, as it kind of shrinks down, as it gets like low on volume, then it can cause a suction as it, as it like leans on the uh, impella itself, which has a little motor that's spinning. And if you get in a suction alarm and you give a little bit of albumin, you're going to see it expand and you're going to see that suction alarm stop and it release itself from the sidewall. Some of the major complications we see once impellas are in place are uh, damage to the myocardium because this is a motor inside of a very soft tissue. I mean, it's if you've ever seen the inside of a heart, it's not hard like the great barrier that we have in our skin. The inside of the body is like very soft. And so if it does suction up to the side and you can't get it loose, that can cause damage, as you can imagine. Um, so as a nurse, we're being super prudent with making sure that the position is appropriate. We're being super prudent with following our alarms, increasing pressures, all these different things, and communicating with our providers if we have concerns or calling um, Abiomed if we have any concerns at all. Another complication that we see uh, is clotting. And so whether that looks takes the form of looking like limb ischemia, or whether that takes the form of patients after we pull the impellas having strokes, both of those things do happen. And so it's really important that you make sure you understand what the anticoagulation coagulation plan is for your patient. Um, it could be maybe most of the time in most facilities, it's going to be that if a patient has an impella, they're going to be on a heparin drip. Now there are times and cases patients who can't tolerate heparin, our platelets are for all these different things. But if there's not a reason, then most likely they are going to be on a heparin drip uh, with a protocol. Most protocols at facilities and the Abiomed website, uh, 160 to 180 uh, is a normal place to get your ACT. If you go by PCTs, it's going to be a little bit different. One thing I love about ACTs at my facility is that they're immediate. If I just send a PTT, I send it downstairs and it's an indefinite, who knows, time. Two hours later, I get it back and I should have already titrated it. So there's pros and cons with both. Um, I personally like the ACT because I get the results and I can make the changes that are needed really quickly. So that's a pro for me with the ACT uh, as the nurse at the bedside. So bleeding is also a complication that we see because we put these patients on anticoagulation. So bleeding can be happening from all different places. If they're on the impella for a lot of days, you start to see the platelets dropping. And so these are common things that we see. Uh, we're watching those sites, we're checking those pulses, we're making sure we head off as much of this as we can. So if you start to see uh, something called hemolysis, then you're going to want to let your provider know. So what does this look like? This is a complication of having an impella as it kind of can grind up some of these red blood cells. The first thing that you might notice is that you may notice that urine that was previously very clear and beautiful starts to get a blood tinge or an amber when it was not that way previously. If you had a patient that came in that already had this amber, it's a little bit harder to tell. But if you have a patient that had good clean urine and now they don't, you should be suspicious that this is hemolysis. And you want to reach out to your provider and let them know. Another sign of hemolysis that you are going to want to look for 
is if you send off labs, the first time if they hemolyze, you're probably like, okay, like maybe I did something wrong in collecting them, right? That could be me. But if I send off labs and my patients will generally, we have great providers that if our patients come in with an impella, they usually will give them a central line so we can manage that CVP. They'll usually put in an art line so that we can adequately manage their blood pressure. And they'll usually let us have a Foley so that we can make sure we're not having these issues with hemolysis. If I have a patient that I pulled from their art line and sent off blood and it comes back hemolyzed, a lot of times the second time I pull it, I'll try to pull it from somewhere else, whether that's a stick or whether that's from their central line, just to make sure it's not a user error. But when I get that second message of, hey, your blood hemolyzed again, and I know that that second time I took every precaution to make sure I didn't pull that blood too fast or damage those blood cells in any way myself, every red alarm is going off and every red flag is up and I am going to let the provider know, hey, I'm concerned uh, about placement. This could be too far in. I could be like hitting the ventricle and I'm not getting any alarms, but twice my blood's hemolyzed. And then a lot of times they're going to order for you to have an echo so that you can check placement um, because the echo is the gold standard to make sure that your echo, that to make sure that your impella is in the correct place. So that's kind of the beginning of impella. We're going to talk more about the console and about other things about impellas, but that is video 101, uh, impella care 101 from a CVSU nursing bedside uh, care. So let me know uh, more topics you want to know, what questions you have. I love to talk about these things. I love to kick it back and forth and hear what different places are doing. And uh, yeah, but if you have questions, don't forget uh, on every impella I've ever seen, there's an 800 number for calling the Abiomed. There is at our hospital, we have cell phone numbers for every single rep and our impeller reps are amazing. I can call them at 3 a.m. and say, hey, uh, the CV surgeon's on his way up here to reposition the impella. They'll get on the phone with them and talk them through it if we need help repositioning and stuff like that. Um, and Johnson & Johnson also has, uh, they own impella. They actually have a really good YouTube page. So head over there and check that out. I'll try to link it below. But continue to follow this uh, series. Follow this, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and learn all the things in Pella so you can feel competent whenever you're caring for your patients in a CVICU setting.